As far as the Ahmadiyyat is concerned and the persecution of Ahmadiyyat, there is not the least reason for politics to be involved in it directly because we have never played any political game, we have never posed any political threat to anybody in the world. We are truly a religious people and yet those Ahmadis who live in a country, if under the laws of the country they are permitted to take part in the local politics, they have their civic right to do that because uh, Islam does not uh, forbid using your civic rights. So the politics, the role, uh, the role they play in that sort of politics, which is their natural politics, is not, uh, does not turn the nature of the community to a political party. They are two distinctly different things. And they join Ahmadiyyad as a religious party. We speak to them on religion. We train them according to religion, religious values. So much so that when as individual they are permitted to take part in politics, they take part quite differently from the ordinary people who are not trained in religious values. For example, politics is understood to be a game of lies. Who tells better lies and louder lies and goes for propaganda, unscrupulous propaganda, generally he wins. But if an enemy is permitted to take part in politics as a right to him, uh, I mean as a right of every other citizen, he would not be permitted to do this. So we have turned Ahmadis out of Ahmadiyya community for behaving like this in politics. So the politics of a true Muslim is very different. It is bound by certain laws and regulations. That is the general answer. The particular answer, I am getting closer to the, this, this problem now. The particular answer applicable to this problem is this, that the motivation of our, of our enemies is not religious. That is entirely political. So under the garb of religion, a religious community is uh, used as a stepping stone for their nefarious objectives. And they trample upon us so that they can save their own skin. That is the situation. Now, we have to wage our war in every direction to defeat this purpose. We will be doing it for the sake of Allah, forsaking the integrity of Jamaat Ahmadiyya. But the means we will be using may not be entirely religious, but they will be religious in the sense that they will follow the dictates of the Holy Quran and never step outside the dictates. For example, if we launch a propaganda, not if an out of that propaganda will be false. It will always be restricted to truth and facts of life and nothing but the truth. So this is the religious politics, quite different from ordinary politics. Now, if somebody attacks you, the Holy Quran gives you the right to defend. And from whichever direction the attack comes, you have to use the same weaponry. The fact is that if somebody is attacking you politically, trying to destroy you politically, you must use the political weapons as well as long as you can wield them properly and as long as you stick to the Islamic values. So, to expose the game of a people who are deceiving another people and trying to convince them that your safety lies in our safety, so you help us. Suppose this is the situation and they are deceiving. If we expose that game, how can you call it possible? politics, expose that game to save your own interests which are wrongly trampled upon. So the, a fine distinction is made when you go into the, into the details of what is happening. But the measures, as I just mentioned, the two measures which, on which we depend is just 
closeness to Allah and our prayer to Him. To him. And to Him alone we turn for uh, succor and for help. And He has never uh, deserted us in the history. Never once. The greater the danger, greater was the help which came from Allah. And it was made distinctly known to the people that the help which came lay beyond the reach of Ahmadis. It was never the doing of Ahmadis. It was beyond the reach, absolutely beyond. And yet it came. So that proved that it was not directly related to the millions taken by us. It was something which came from Allah Himself. Yet we are, we, are, we are expected to take all means. This is the philosophy of true religion. And this is another aspect which you must understand. Islam tells us to do whatever is in our power to show earnestness and honesty of purpose. If we do whatever we can do, only then we can prove that we are sincere to that cause. And if, having done everything we can do, there is a large chunk left beyond our reach, which has to be performed or, or done before we could succeed, that large chunk will be supplied by Allah. This is the promise. This is the philosophy of prayer. So prayer is never a phenomena beyond the natural phenomena. Their borders meet you reach to the limit of natural phenomena, that is your efforts, and then whatever is left out, that is supplicated, supplemented by prayer. And most often than not, that chunk which is supplemented by prayer is much larger, out of all proportion larger, to your efforts. Now, in this light, when you will read the history of Amadeya, then you will understand what I mean. Things were completely beyond us. For example, Bhutto, what he tried to do to Ahmadiyyad, in fact he initiated all this. He was so powerful that uh, even death, he is more powerful than living leaders of Pakistan. It is the threat of Bhutto which is compelling others not to go for elections. Because they know he is so powerful. He was so powerful that when he was to be hanged, this was decided, countries all over the world recommended to the present ruler to save his neck. Strangely enough, a phenomena occurred which had never been witnessed by the world before, that Cuba recommended as well as America recommended, China recommended as well as Russia recommended. Jordan recommended as well as Syria recommended. Muslim world recommended as well as Jewish world recommended. Not a single country was left out which, which did not recommend mercy for, plead mercy for Buddha. Now, who could have done it? That despite all these pressures, despite everything, he still hanged as prophesied by Hazrat Muslim of the Islam. And no Ahmadi had to play any role whatsoever in this. Ahmadi was not concerned. It was not even mentioned why this was happening. But Ahmadi knew. So this is what I mean by the help from Allah. Despite the fact that what, whatever we was in our power we did. But we failed. But ultimately Allah helped us from heaven miraculously and first he, he revenged the atrocities done to Ahmadiyya in a manner that the whole world saw this miracle happen. And in the second place, he saved us from the natural consequences of that deceit. Now this is very important. Victory is not always visible in the direction where you are looking for it. Apparently they succeeded in checking us out of the pale of Islam. So a man with superficial outlook can say, okay, where is God's help? Bhutto after all did succeed 
in throwing you out of the pale of Islam. So he succeeded. But what was the objective? The objective was that of Bhutto as well as that of the Mali, that uh, one, because Ahmadis are understood to be Muslims, this is why they are spreading among Muslims. The moment the people know that from now on there is going to be a high wall separating the land of Ahmadiyya from the land of Islam, then they will dare not go into the region of Ahmadiyya because then they will be dubbed as non-Muslims. That was a very diabolical plan and according to human conception it should have succeeded. The mayor was taken, the wall was created and raised higher. But the result, the, 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 the present government, the, one of their generals, admitted it in so many words and it was published in papers. It is a recorded history now. Once he was put to a question by, by when he was traveling in Azad Kashmir by some newspaper men, vis-a-vis and the earth and its spread, and the answer was, look here, we took all the years we could to stop the spread of Ahmadiyya, but according to the government reports, they are spreading ten times as fast as, as before. And through preaching they have gained ten percent of their number within last few years. That's a, long ago, that's a time long ago, uh, and then uh, uh, it had just last three or four years, uh, I mean not a bit more, six or seven years after the decision of 74. So it is, uh, yes, I think it is about four or five years before that happened. So if within five years of that decision, the speed of spread is accelerated, the purpose of this decision is totally defeated and frustrated, and the opposite result is gained, who is the victorious of the two? One who gains, not the one who loses. So apparently sometimes you, they think, the enemy thinks that you are defeated. But in the final analysis, in the net result, the enemy is defeated himself. This is why they launched this movement. They knew they could not gain anything out of that decision and their hopes were frustrated. So they kept at it with a greater vengeance. They cried themselves both that unless we take such, such measures as would physically destroy all enemies, they are going to go on spreading and winning and we'll lose the battle. So that is what I mean, help from Allah. When the hatred increases, how can you spread among the people who begin to hate you more? When the barriers are strengthened, the crossings should be less. This is a natural phenomenon of science. But the phenomena of prayer reverses this. And this is what, what we call truly the miraculous happening. We don't believe in those miracles which are just show business like uh, any conjurer. We are very super, superficial concept of miracles. The real miracles are these, that despite each odd, ultimately the weaker becomes the stronger and continues to be stronger. And no one can change this fate and this course of history. This is what is happening to Amelia.